All right, so here is one final example of job market signaling model of Spence. And uh, the problem that I'm going to work now is exactly the same, well, is very much the same as the previous problem. The only difference is the cost of education, all right? So if you remember, the pre in the previous example, the cost of education was $1 for high type and $6 for low type. So here, what I did is I increased the cost of education for high type and decreased the cost of education for low type. What matters is the education is still costly for low type. I mean, more costlier for the low type than for the high type. So it's four versus $3. So low type is gonna suffer more. But the thing is, the education here in this example isn't too costly to distinguish these two types. So for low type, it's uh, $4, but for high type, it's $3. You can think of this as, well, this is a college education where everybody gets A without attending any class. The exams are easy, the classes are easy, the tests are easy. And you know what? The students do not have to spend too much time on working on their courses or projects. So instead, they can actually go outside and work part-time, all right? So the cost of education is not that high. I mean, the opportunity cost of education is also not that high, all right? So let's think it that way. And also, the high type is not Sheldon-like genius. It's just a regular guy, all right? But he is nevertheless more productive, and this high productive guy actually brings $15 per hour for the company, and the low productivity guy still brings $10, hour, $10 per hour, all right? So still, high productivity guy is more profitable for the firms, but the cost of education isn't that big uh, across the workers. So then, what are the possible outcome of this environment? Well, let me say the conclusion now, because it's very interesting. In this example, we'll see there is no separating equilibrium and there is no pooling equilibrium where they both get education. The only equilibrium in this example is the pooling equilibrium where nobody gets an education. So the bottom line that I wanted to share with you guys is making education less costly is actually not a good thing. All right. Why is that? Well, if the education isn't costly, if it is not challenging enough, well, then the firms are not going to be able to distinguish the high times from the low times because everyone can get the education anyway. So it's not that costly. So you know what? The high type guy will not try to get an education because what's the point? Um, I know that I can't distinguish myself from the other guy, so I'm not going to get an education, what uh, high productivity guys will say. And the low productivity guys are dying to not to get an education anyway. So the bottom line is the only outcome of this uh, particular situation is nobody getting any education whatsoever. Um, so this is the most inefficient outcome, obviously, in this framework. Um, okay, so... Uh, well, let's discuss why we don't have a separating equilibrium. No separating equilibrium. Suppose there is, all right? So suppose high gets education, but low doesn't, all right? Is it going to be a regretful action? Well, let's see. Well, the utility of the high type if he gets the education versus utility, oops, utility of the high type if he doesn't get the education. So th these are the utilities that we need to compare. Utility of the high type when he doesn't get the education. So because the conjecture is such that high type gets education, low type doesn't, whenever somebody uh, applies with a uh, diploma, the firms are going to assume that this must be the high productivity guys, so they're going to offer him $15 of wage. All right, remember, the firms do not observe your type, they observe your education. So they are paying you $15 only because they believe only the high types get education. So by looking, by seeing your diploma, they're going to interpret that as if you are the high type. 
And in fact, they're going to be correct. So the $15 is going to be your utility minus $3 is going to be your cost. So $12 is your benefit. Well, what if you don't get an education? Well, in that case, the firms, remember, they don't observe your type. They just observe your education level and they conjecture, they believe that the low type doesn't get an education. So if they don't see that you don't, you have no diploma, they're going to say, oh, you must be the low productivity guy. They're going to be, the firms are going to be wrong, but anyway, they're going to pay you $10. And because you didn't get an education, your cost will be zero. So your utility will be 10. So what does that mean? High prefers education. So he's not going to regret his choice. Good. What about the low type? The low type is going to cause the problem. Well, if he doesn't get an education versus if he gets an education, remember, the, there are two actions for these uh, workers, uh, for high type or low type workers. It get education or not. So E is equal to zero or one. So if the low type worker gets no education, we know that firms are going to pay him $10 and the zero of uh, cost of education, so his utility will be net 10. However, if he gets an education, remember, firms are going to pay you according to your diploma, not according to your type, because they can't observe your type. Since they're going to see your uh, uh, diploma, they're going to pay you $15 because they think you're the high type. They're going to be wrong, but they're going to pay you $15 minus the cost of education, which is four, so 11 net. So what does that mean? Low also prefers education. So that means this conjecture cannot be in equilibrium because the low type shouldn't, I mean, wasn't supposed to get an education, but indeed, if he doesn't get an education and see that the high type is paid $15, he's gonna regret his choice because he prefers education in that case. So therefore, uh, the low type is going to deviate from this conjecture. And hence, there can't be an equilibrium, a separating equilibrium in this game. Clear? All right. Now the pooling equilibrium. Pooling equilibrium where both gets education. All right? So what does that mean? That means whenever E is equal to 1, the firms are going to say, uh, you know what? Uh, it could be the high type. It could be the low type. I don't know. I believe that with half a probability, it's the high type. Low with half probability, it's the low type. So in expectation, the productivity of the worker is going to be 12.5. I mean, 1 half times 15 plus 1 half times 10. So it's 12.5. So therefore, the wage is going to be 12.5 whenever they observe that you got the education. However, if E is zero, so remember the assumptions in this course, we said if somebody does something outside of the conjecture, and if it is no education, given that the conjecture is that everybody should get education, and somebody is acting outside of the conjecture and doesn't get an education. So it must be the low type. So therefore your wage is going to be, uh, in this case, um, 10. So the high type getting education and the high type getting no education. So if you're a high type and get an education, according to this conjecture, you're going to be paid $12.5 and you're going to suffer the cost of $3. So in net terms, you're going to make 9.5 utility. However, if you don't get any utility of uh, any education, you would have been paid $10 because they would, they will think the firms will think that you're a low productivity guy. So you're going to, they're going to pay you $10, but you're not going to suffer the cost of education. So your net utility will be 10. So you know what? High type prefers no education. Uh, so this time, the high type is causing the problem. We don't need to look at the low type. I mean, low type could be super happy with, uh, with uh, education. Probably he won't be, all right? Because if education was 
uh, costly. Well, education is costlier for the low type. So the low type will also prefer no education. So therefore, there is no pooling equilibrium, pooling equilibrium in which both high and low types get education because they are going to regret. The high type is going to regret and he's going to say, hey, you know what? I got an education, but I couldn't distinguish myself from the low type. And so I'm paid $12.5. And so I'm making net 9.5 utility. If I didn't have an education, I would have paid $10 without any you know, suffering of education. So net utility of 10. So I regret that I actually got the education. So it was a crappy diploma and it has no benefit. So you know what? I shouldn't get that crappy diploma at the first place. That's what's gonna happen. Well, then uh, one final situation is pooling equilibrium where no types get an education, all right? So what does that mean? That means if, remember, the firms cannot distinguish your type. They can only observe your uh, diploma or no diploma situation and then pay you accordingly. So if they observe no diploma, this time you're going to be paid $12.5. Why is that? Well, because the conjecture is such that no one was expected to get a diploma. All right. So somebody applied to my company and I wasn't expecting anyone. So I was basically looking for a high school graduate. And then, well, I got in a high school graduate, no college diploma. So I'm going to say, well, it could be actually very productive guy or it could be very low productive guy. I don't know. 50-50 chance. So in expectation, I should pay $12.5. However, if somebody happens to get a diploma, uh, so he's outside of the conjecture, I'm going to say, oh, you know what? This must be the high type. So I'm going to pay this guy $15 of wage. Okay, so let's see if the high type will actually prefer no education over education. All right, so the high type, if he doesn't get an education, uh, he's going to be paid 12.5, but because he didn't suffer any cost, so his net utility will be 12.5. If he does get an education, well, the companies are going to think he is or he must be the high type. So they're going to pay him more, but he has to suffer three. Um, is it three? Yes. Three dollars of cost, which is twelve dollars. So what does that mean? That means high actually prefers no education over education. OK, so therefore the high type will actually uh, behave uh, according to the conjecture. So he's not going to regret his choice of not getting an education. Well, what about the low type? The low type getting no education and the low type getting an education. If the low type gets no education, again, his wage is 12.5 minus zero cost, net utility 12.5. If he does get an education, the companies, the firms, will going to assume that he must be the high productivity guy. They will be wrong, but this is what they're going to believe. However, he has to go through uh, a, a, an education, which is costly, $4. So his net utility will be $11, which is less than 12.5. What does that mean? Al also prefers no education. OK. What does that mean? That means neither high type nor low type will regret from their choice. And they're going to say, you know what? Uh, I'm glad I didn't get an education because it wasn't worth it. All right. So therefore, as we analyzed all potential equilibria, separating, pooling, no separating equilibrium, 
and only pulling equilibrium where no one gets an education. So the, again, the conclusion is if the cost of education is not too high to distinguish these types, I mean, yes, it is now higher for the high type in comparison to the previous uh, example, but the, the cost of education is lower for the low type. So the, the education isn't that costly for the agents. And both the high type and low type can get the education if it has a signaling value, all right? Um, so what happens is that if you make the education so cheap, so powerless, well then nobody will get an education. So you have to make the education really costly for at least low types. And so the low types will prefer not to get an education. Again, uh, I may sound like I am against uh, you know, educating everyone, hell no. Uh, all I'm saying is, if it comes to the signaling value of education, the cost of education plays a very important role. However, there's another fact that we shouldn't forget is that the education actually increases labor productivity, which we ignored all those models because again, remember the, the Spence job market signaling model, uh, the idea of his model and, and, and in his paper uh, was that the education could be valuable asset even if it doesn't increase your productivity. All right, but the bottom line is a cheap education, I mean costless education, let's put it this way. I mean, when it comes to cheap education, it sounds like uh, we have to raise the university fees and, and college fees. No, what I mean is that the university education should be challenging enough so that the high productive guys say that actually it is worth taking the education because I know the high types are not going to get that education and so I can separate myself from the high productivity guys and so the high productivity guys will take the education. At least they will take the education. All right? Uh, anyway, uh, no political uh, uh, message at the end. I hope the model and the solution was clear. Best of luck in your exams.